Do you own a milling machine? Well, my friend, this video is not for you. Do you own a machinist lathe? This video is probably not for you either. Is your name Patricia and your last name rhymes with runway? Well, this video is not for you either. But if you happen to own a halfway decent drill press and a cross slide vise or are thinking about getting a cross slide vise, then hey, this video is definitely for you. Because this video is about my tips and tricks for bake sale basic drill press machining. My name is Eric Strebel. I'm an industrial designer. Welcome to my channel about product design and making. I hope that you like, enjoy, and become a subscriber. Make sure that you hit that little bell next to the subscribe button too in case you haven't already done so. That way you'll be notified every time I have a new video. Now another option is one of these mill and drill machines and most of us don't own this either. So we're going to be using our drill press. Before we get started though, I want to thank some of my special subs. You know who you are and you have totally inspired me to make this video. As a product designer, I use all kinds of materials to make my models. Whether it's dueling foam, wood, metal, plastics, sometimes you just didn't even know what exactly what you're using or how hazard it is. So it goes without saying, the number one tip is safety. Wear some safety glasses, the appropriate respirator, particularly if you're using some of those urethane tooling foams, and if you need to, use some earplugs. My next tip is obviously a really good cross slide vise. You want to increase the, your milling capabilities from the single axis drill press to the other two uh, X and Y axes, and you're going to need a cross slide vise to do that. I'm using a Wilton cross slide vise. It's American, but Chinese made. It's average. It's not nearly as good as what it seemed like I was getting when I bought it. So do your research and get yourself a good cross slide vise because if you can reduce chatter and vibration, it'll make your parts that much better. If you don't already own a set, get yourself a set of stepped metric drill bits. These are half millimeter increments incredibly useful and super valuable and of course a halfway decent set of milwaukee drill bits that i use all the time i also own a set of these pointy drill bits which are way too aggressive for model making i don't recommend them it goes without saying get yourself a set of end mill bits i find them incredibly useful for machining just about anything aluminum here metal wood plastic those urethane foams they work fantastic for that now I started out just using router bits that I already had and those work quite well but eventually I switched over to the end mills because ultimately we're milling and that's what you want to use you may run into a situation where you have to face off a piece of material here I'm facing off a piece of PVC uh, it's like an end cap. So what I do is I clamp the end mill into my cross slide vise and I slide that under the bottom of it and face off that piece of PVC. In this case, I need to turn like a plug. This is a piece of Bondo and I clamp a chisel in my cross slide vise, plunge that part up and down, square it off. The drill press I'm using is a central machinery. It's a Harbor Freight deal, basically. It's China, it's pretty average. It has these three arms on it. And I find it like incredibly confusing to uh, know which arm to grab onto. So I remove two of them and just leave one in. And I move it to the appropriate spot, depending upon what work I'm doing. That way, all I have to do is grab for one handle and not worry about what handle I'm grabbing for when I'm doing my work. Now, may not be for everybody but it works for me inevitably when you're machining milling drilling you're gonna have dust and chips and sawdust and whatever particles on your workbench or your work surface so I have installed a trash can right next to my milling station and it's a little square deal it doesn't take up a lot of room and still allows me to work and then it's easy to empty as well and it just allows me to keep my work area nice and clean I have this portable tool cart that all my machines sit on and I can move it around my uh, shop. And I have a dust collection system that's built into this uh, unit. 
So I've installed an extra port that I could just hook up a hose and have an instant vacuum cleaner anywhere uh, I'm working so I can clean up and stay neat. Here's a great little trick for cleaning out the small spaces inside of your cross slide vise. Get yourself a little cup and cut a little hole in the bottom of it uh, with an X-Acto blade that's a little bit smaller than the size of a straw. Then you can insert the straw, pop that onto the end of your vacuum, and you'll be able to vacuum out those tight little spaces that you can normally never get the dust and chips and debris out of. My number one tip is to get yourself a good chuck. I got myself a nice keyless chuck that's a 132nd to 5 8 It replaces the 3mm to 16mm piece of crap that came with my original drill press. I really got it because I was having run out problems. So my bits were wobbling. I couldn't get any square or straight cuts, I should say. It's just so much easier not having to worry about the key, losing the key, finding the key. You use two hands, you tighten up the bit, boom, you're done. If you liked the video and you found it useful, smash that thumbs up button and leave a comment. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can click on the little icon on the bottom right of the screen to do that. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Google+. Rock on. Click here to watch some of the other design and making videos that I have. If you'd like to have your music featured in one of my videos, drop me a line.